Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities in Miniatures, and today I've got a really cool treat that I am very happy to get to share with you guys. And it's not the dude in front of you, although he is kind of related to it. This was Hotem Ra from Storm Sunder, a board game from Lazy Squire Games. And this was actually one of the resin masters, and I was lucky enough, I guess my name got inserted into a contest or something, I don't even remember now, but they were cool and they sent me one of these to try painting up, and I'd like to think that I did a reasonably decent job. And this was just one of the resin masters, and I was quite doubtful, I'll be honest, uh, when they said they were going to try to get this level of quality in board game plastic. I mean, we've all seen it and heard it, we've all seen renders. We've all been through plenty of campaigns on Kickstarter, whatever crowdfunding sites say, oh yeah, we're going to have the greatest. Well, I, I got to say, you know what? Lazy Square actually really did follow through with that. Um, I did paint up one of their actual sample characters. This was Kapak Roka. And he actually is one of the heroes from Storm Sunder. This was the actual legit board game plastic. Not that I'm the greatest painter, but I did try to do it justice. I thought he came out pretty decent. And I'm going to show off, okay, just so I can prove that, you know, I've been working on, what was her name, Lady something, Lady Renata, I think. I've been trying to work on her and get her going here. It's been very slow going. I haven't been able to figure out what I wanted to do, but this is the actual board game plastic. We'll try to finish her up one of these days. I figured I'd show, just to show what we've been working on. But, lucky me, I got a box in the mail, just today, from Lazy Squire Games, and guess what? It's got more Storm Thunder stuff. And not only is it only one figure, I actually got three of these little boxes, and they are going to be chock full of their actual board game plastics. So we've got a bunch of, who do we have in here? Vanessa, Jaden, and Alexander. Alexander was one of the twins, wasn't he? Pretty sure these are, yeah, I know she's one of the playable characters. As nice as that artwork is, let's take a look. Ooh, that's one of the bad guys. Is he from one of the expansions? I know he goes with Hotemar. This, this is board game plastic. Nice and bendy, where it needs to be. But check that out. That is sharp. I mean, not like physically sharp, but the quality is seriously there. I don't know what companies these guys are using, but they are definitely stepping it up. You can tell it's board game plastic when we get a little bit of bendy, bendy spears like that. Obviously a little bit of heat and get that fixed up but again I mean the level of detail here is quite nice I am suitably impressed we'll grab a couple of models okay those are just bad guys here we go that's Alexander isn't it I'm like I gotta look at the cards yeah I think so I'm having a hard time figuring out how to paint the decorative bits around the wings Quite a few characters have those, and you can see there's like little engravings on it. All the decorative parts of the sword. He is not wearing any shoes. I hadn't noticed that. Again, this is just board game plastic. Quite impressive. Or is that Alexander? All I know is I hear the name Alexander, and instantly I wait for him to pull out his magic map from playing way too many King's Quest games back in the day. This is going to be a nice substitute for my lack of a Crimson Court, since all those scalpers online have taken them all. Now Vanessa here is going to make a nice Inquisitor or Witch Hunter. You can see, yeah, there's a little bit of mold lines here and there, but I mean, look how close my thumbs are to the picture, to the screen. And I mean, the detail holds up nice and crisp. Shall we look at some more? I want to look at some more. We'll get everybody on the camera here in a sec. All right, this next box, who's in here? Here. 
Winter. And Lord Gregor. Alright, Lord Gregor. That ain't only Lord Gregor, okay. That is a patty. Solid piece of plastic. The detailing there is insane and it's going to be really hard to get under there. Unfortunately, you are fused to your base, aren't you? I can see there's some glue spots, but yeah, it's going to be a challenge getting under there to get things painted. I guess that is one of the downsides of the board game material. I guess when you got a human size figure, you know, when you can just kind of bend them and bop them all over the place to get to things. Another of the vampires. Now I'm not feeling so bad. <laughs> I was really legit bummed out. I never got that Crimson Court. Local store never even saw it, but these are going to make for a fine substitute. And there's just so many freaking figures in this game. That looks like Lord Gregor here. And he's got those marks on his face, much like in the art. Are you pointy-eared? You are pointy-eared. Lots of little details on the bases. That's one thing I've noticed also, is everybody has something going on on their base. And I believe this is Winter. I wish the gun was a little bit larger or just a little bit different pose, but I guess to make things work in the material that they're using, it is a necessary evil. Treasure chest there on her base. All of her various trinkets hanging off of her gear there. Very cool. All right, last box. Get them all out of the way and bang the camera. Knock things over, shoot. All right, who's in this one? We've got Lord Garages and old guy, Fellheim. We've got little blurbs of lore on the back there. Where's Fellheim? Ooh, and another vampire dude. This guy's quite nice looking, I gotta say. We'll get a nice lineup going on here and see how tall. Of course, some characters have larger bases than others. That does play into things here. An empty scabbard he's got? Why are you carrying an empty scabbard, silly? Ah, here's Fellheim. He's a big dude. And he's channeling some serious confrontation carrying that reindeer head with him. You got any sausages on you while you're at it? Doesn't seem like it. This guy is going to be a fun one to paint. You can actually get the most of the stuff on him, too. The runes engraved on his base there. Did our vampire friend not a whole lot other than debris? Oh, it looks like he's got like a coffin he's standing on. Possibly. Another of the town grunts. I think a lot of dry brushing is going to really make these guys pop for you non-painter types. I gotta say, man. Okay, that's not attached. That's okay. These are really stinking nice. I'm assuming that's a shield on his back. See, so he's playing Brotherhood of the Wolf with his bone whip there. Most people would say Ivy from Soul Calibur. I'm gonna go with Brotherhood of the Wolf. And one of these sentry dudes. These are some big figures. It's crazy, too, because with the current Wild Ascent campaign wrapping up, everything in that game is going to be about this size now. Uh, just to give you an idea, so here's an original Wild Ascent Seeker. 
I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But you can see there's a definite increase in size and I mean honestly while the quality is there with the resin stuff this is a whole lot easier to work with not to knock the resin castings from Archon or anything but man I am just seriously impressed with what these guys are pumping out and here I was thinking you know oh yeah this is just a flaw nope I I think they at least to me and my particular discerning eyes, I gotta say, they are absolutely matching what they were doing with resin. Uh, just a great looking set of models here. And considering the sheer amount of stuff you guys are gonna get, if you back either any of the Storm Sunder or, you know, Late Back It or get any of those expansions or Wild Ascent, I mean, you, you're gonna get a lot of bang for your buck. You really are. I'm almost of the mind that I'd love to see you know, there's just so much. And I'll be honest, I don't think, even if I play through the core game, I'm ever going to be able to get to any of the expansion stuff. I mean, I've barely, you know, played through, I don't know how many Lantern years in how many literal years so far with Kingdom Death. To me, I'd almost love to see some of this stuff, like what Blacklist Games is doing, where they've been releasing, you know, like their fantasy miniature line, where they took a lot of this stuff that actually has stats for their you know, Alter Quest and whatever other games they've got coming, but just straight up release the figures. I mean, I think, in my humble opinion, I think that Lazy Squire is sitting on a gold mine with these figures. Um, to me, throw them in a bag or a box, pack them up. I, I'm more than happy. Skip the game components. Just give me a bunch of cool looking figures to paint up and work with and put in other games. I think I would be a, certainly a happy camper, and I doubt I'd be alone. So if you guys are curious what you're getting into in terms of scale here, we'll grab a Reaper Human, we'll grab our WizKids Human here, we'll grab a Privateer Press figure, any excuse I can put Bloody Bradigan Pit on screen, I will absolutely take it. So you can see, I mean, looking at our lineup here, I think they're going to be pretty well scaled. They're not you know, bursting into Conquest territory too much. I mean, some of the guys at the fancier bases, not that they look really out of place, but I think the features on most of the humanoid characters so far I've seen are a lot more kind of true scale, not kind of blown up like the Conquest stuff is. And I really dig Conquest, so that's not a knock on it or anything like that. Grabbing a Frostgrave guy, but the Frostgrave stuff... If you haven't really been paying attention, is a lot more kind of old school, you know, almost historical scale. So if you're wanting to mix and match that, if you don't mind the size difference, I'd say it works. But I think for the most part, most modern figures aren't going to really have an issue, I think, blending in with this stuff. If you want to mix and match it with other games. Old GW, maybe. Do I have new GW handy? I don't know. I don't think I do, actually. Mantic. So, like I said, I think the quality of the figures that you're going to be getting with these games looks just amazing. I, 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 I'm having a hard time coming up with words here to describe it, but I mean, it takes a lot for me to get impressed, and I'm not one to just put stuff on video if I'm not really into it. So, the fact that they've really stepped it up in terms of, you know, plastic components... All y'all other board game designers out there better be watching yourselves or getting in touch with Lazy Squire because honestly and truly, this stuff's looking good. So, if you're curious about the games, I'm going to put links down below. As of right now, when I filmed this, um, which isn't the day that I'm posting this, obviously, uh, I know that they are wrapping up the reprint for Wild Ascent, which I've had a chance to try out so far, and it is a pretty fun game. Um... I'm hoping that some of my issues with it are going to be fixed up with the current reprint. I think there's way too many tokens, but that's an issue I have with a lot of games. Um, but if you're looking for a boss battler similar to like Kingdom Death, I think it's a pretty good fit and it's a whole lot more family friendly if that's an issue as well. I'll put a link down there for that game and if you're curious, do check it out. Uh, had a lot of fun and, you know, these guys are unfortunately going to be going the way of the dinosaurs. But we're going to use the remains of those said dinosaurs to make awesome looking plastic figures. So yeah, 
We'll leave it at that. Links down below, check them out. And with that said, this has been High Lord Tamerlane with Obscurities in Miniatures saying thanks for watching, and we will see you back here soon. Bye bye.